Hey guys, how's it going? Man, Akiro back once again, this time with The Wilting Amaranth. Now this is a short, eerie romance visual novel. Got two character routes, 13 endings, and 3 to 5 hours of gameplay. We're not going to show it all, we never do, but we're going to give you a little taste to see if you like it or not. This is a free key provided to us by Top Hat Studios as a disclaimer, so it's a free key that we're going to be checking out in a preview. So yeah, let's check out The Wilting Amaranth. Quite excited for this one, as I do like my visual novel, so let's go. Once upon a time, there was a witch who lived alone in the tower. Let's just turn the volume down. On my end it was really loud. Right, in the past many had tried to kill her, but they rarely returned with all of their wits. In fact, this became so common that no one ever dared to go near the witch's tower. Not until a brave young rogue accepted a hefty bounty to found the accursed Chantress. This rogue was never seen again. Our story, however, starts much later. The moon and stars shone across the land, specking the inky blackness with their light. On this night, the witch casts a spell. Every celestial body that can be seen from Earth becomes the witch's eyes as she searches for a heart that sparkles like no other. She's perfect. So can we press H? Yes, we can. It's always my favourite button to press in visual novels, H to hide the HUT, and you can see some some small animation, I believe, on the character, unless I was mistaken. Oh, no, there we go. Far away, a beauty like no other... I don't know what some of the for then. Far away, a beauty like no other stares up at the sky. In her tears, the stars dance. Before the iridescent beauty of the moon absorbs the troubles in her heart. Uh, all, all the information for this game you can find down below. What you gotta do is click show more. I'm not too sure. Alright, it's about £3.59 or your regional equivalent. But yeah, anyway, that's... Let's get on in with this now, let's get stuck in. Even more profound than the woman's beauty is her loneliness, an emotion so strong that it shatters the stars above, causing them to fall from the sky. I never asked for this. A small star becomes trapped inside the watery confines of the beauty's tears. When droplets hit the floor, they explode. The witch jumps away from the cauldron. What's happening? The witch's cauldron shakes, but she simply continues to watch. <laughs> Alright. The beauty's tears continue to catch stars as they fall, until one final explosion erupts in the cauldron, and throws the witches clear across the room. Eh? She slowly opens her eyes, waking up to a painful weight on her chest. She tries to stand, forcing the weight to shift, but then begins to groan. You're here? The beauty from the cauldron lays upon the witch, curled up in a layer of black fabric that suits her long, raven hair. The woman named Amarante is a princess blessed with all the luxuries that her fortune and position bring, yet she is bereft of everything they cannot deliver. And this is where our story begins, peoples. My eyelids blink open. What a strange dream. I sit up and... Mm. Did you like that? Did you like that moment? Mm. I'll do it again for you, there you go. I did it twice. <laughs> Oh, a twinkling light blinds my vision for a split second before vanishing. Perhaps I should not have been so hasty in getting up. I touch my head as the dull throbbing behind my eyes slowly burns out. How strange. Where am I? My eyes are almost instantly drawn to what is simultaneous, nicest and most dreadful part of the room. A solitary window that is shielded by an ornate lattice. Lattice? Is that how you say a lattice? Lattice? I don't know. It reminds me of pine. Oh, god damn it. Fortunately, barred windows and a 50 foot drop to the ground do not instill me with feelings of safety. Rather, it's quite the opposite. I'll move this over by here. There we go. What kind of person could possibly live in a place like this? I search the room for an answer. The photos on the wall seem to have lost their colour. To the ears, the chests do not open easily. I manage to lift one of the heavy lids a few inches before it slips from my hands and seals shut again, expelling clouds of dust in the process. Uh, 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 uh. I need to get out of here. Mother and father must probable. Mother and father must be worried sick, and I, I'll be. I cannot bring myself to finish the thought. Instead, I decide to continue my search by checking the door. To my utter disbelief, it's not locked. Oh, thank stars! Thank all stars! I leave the room and set off down a series of long, winding stairs. I tiptoe down the steps, always careful to try and be around the next bend before taking another step. 
Each step leaves me more winded than the last and I am forced to rest for a moment. How long must one train to be able to walk around here without fainting? So last night I accidentally slept with the window open and um, yeah I hate it when that happens because I always have a sore throat and trying to do gameplays with a sore throat, oof, and as a visual novel I really, you know, but I wanted to do it, I wanted to check this game out quite a, quite a lot, and uh, yeah. My eyes wander from wall to wall, taking in the surroundings, I cannot help but admire all the latticed windows, each slightly different from the last, at least it is a scenic walk. I continue on with each full circle as I watch the view outside slowly disband deeper into the surrounding woods. I feel like a setting sun. Oh, apologies, I'm just drinking as we go along, as I said. I stop to bask in the warm that shines from the window, imagining I've truly become the warm celestial entity. I'm not quite sure what this place is, and for my own sake, I am hesitant to call her a present just yet. All the same, it is rather beautiful. Has she lost her memory or something? As the gloom of the surrounding forest begins to block out the sunlight, the scattering of candles compensates for the lack of natural lights. Several have burnt out while others are piled together like hordes of waxy mushrooms. Wherever I work, I feel the slick of melted wax beneath my feet. Damn. Damn. Someone must be living here. I actually painted a prick, but painted a pretty good image in my head. Anyway, I'm just gonna, I don't know. Yeah, and I still don't know what they plan to do with me, but I'll never know if I do not ask. So, against my bad judgement, and nearly every lesson I've been taught, I call out, Hello! My voice rings around the staircase's mouse back to me several times in strange and earthly echoes. What a silly idea that was. I continue down, only feeling foolish. Hello? A voice? Although I want to speak out, I start to doubt whether or not I am ready to come face to face with whoever owns this place. What kind of person would list with to wish here? Not one I would be pleased to meet, I'm sure, especially if they are a call for this confusion. Hey! Don't get cold feet now! You hear me? Can you move? Yes, yes I can. Then move your feet and get down here already. A long way passes. Please? <laughs> I slowly continue down the stairs. My mind toddles with thoughts of what my may lie in store for me, none more pleasant than the last. I kind of like the uh, this the artwork, it's kind of really nice, unique. Yeah. After what feels like several minutes of descent, I am greeted by the side of a door. Uh, are you in there? My hand moves down, moves of his own accord, trying to twist the... <laughs> well, the periods, I don't know what I um, Apologies, you know, it's really one of those off days, just kind of... Yeah. Realising it to be far too late, I ponder the consequences I step inside the room. I do not know if I am happy or disappointed to find myself alone again. Nope, try again. Every time the voice speaks, I become more nervous about actually finding them. I appear at my surroundings. I am in a dining room with a collection of crockery, but none of them seem to have a match. Teacups with small saucers and plates with large forks. It's as if someone raided a junk pile to gather all of these things. I do not believe one could ever possibly gain weight from their meals after making such a long journey. I chuckle to myself, however inappropriate it is. I best not linger here any longer. I need to find the exit and get on quickly. Returning to the stairwell, I continue heading downwards. Spiral after spiral, I start to feel dizzy, merely from keeping my eyes open. Are you still there? Not like I can go anywhere else. What do you mean? You'll know when you get here. <laughs> what a sigh of relief. I locate yet another door. More in my right mind than before, I think to press my ear against the door and listen for any signs of life beyond. No matter how long I wait, however, I do not hear a thing, so I decide to keep going. It feels like I'll never reach the bottom. In an attempt to entertain myself, I began counting my steps. 17, 18, 19, 52, 53, 54. 88, 89, well, it could be worse, you could be walking up. <laughs> After another 89 steps, there's a yet another door. Unlike the previous one, however, its knob appears to be rather worn out. The brilliant gold covers is faded on the part where a hand would grip it. This is a good sign, I believe. Assuming no, no one dangerous lies in wait, I pause listening as best as I can. I still do not hear anyone. Well. I have nothing to lose, so I quietly open the door and, hey, before I can push the door open, the voice shouts to me again. Are you going to be much longer? This rate, I'm going to be dead before you get here. Dead? Just a turn of phrase, babe. Come on, 
You're gonna keep me waiting this long? You better be hella cute to make up for this. I'm trying my best. Yeah, and I'd appreciate more if you best got you here a lot sooner. Do you realise how rude you are being right now? I hear that and I'm sorry. I'd like to apologise properly for not speaking to you according to how one should speak to a person such as yourself. But when you have to shout like this, it's kinda hard to sound as cordial as one would like. You understand me? I suppose so. The voice is a strange way of speaking. But I think I understand them. They're probably just frustrated as I am. So I should not keep them waiting any longer. I am coming. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just stopped at a quite a convenient moment there. <laughs> Please. Hold on a bit longer. <laughs> Doing something that I rightfully realise is dangerous. I take the steps three and four and even five at a time. I said I would hurry, and I plan on keeping that promise. Me, Whoa there, Silver. You almost passed me. I stop and look back and I'll cover the ball. Unlike the other hallways, it has no door. It simply opens up the darkened room. Oh, damn. I climb back up the stairs and I'm shocked to see a woman gripping the bars of a prison cell. Hey! Well... Ah, cute, that's for sure. I press H. Boom! Nice. That kind of thing can be hard to tell by a voice, but I had a feeling you'd be worth the wait. You are a woman. You thought I wasn't? I'm Kitty Skies. <laughs> but you are... What, speaking like this? And what? No, in the cell. Not speaking as a woman should. <laughs> oh, this brought up lots of memories. Ah. No. Uh, is this because I called you cute? Being a woman don't make me a liar, and it sure don't make me blind neither. Just makes me speak deeper. Deeper! No, I'm probably better suited to appreciate a cute girl like you. Anyway, being one myself, I know what to look for. You know what I'm saying? No, not quite. <laughs> I should have known by your drags that you were a bit green. No wonder you're not shaking the boots, because of this here current situation coming from your kind of life must really get one comfy with the idea of being locked up in some tower, me? You got all that, right? I shake my head and the woman nearly falls over herself. Weren't you listening to a word of it? I apologise. My mind is already preoccupied with figuring out where I am and how I might return home. Ah, uh, I suppose that's a fair thing to be concerned about. By any chance, Rob lives here? You mean you don't already know? The imprisoned woman looks at me with a pitiful expression and snorts loudly. <laughs> Ah, uh, are they bad? The worst. How else do you think I'd wound up in here? I, um... Exactly. It doesn't make sense. No, no, no. I mean, look at me. I ain't big. I ain't strong. I'm just me. And I can't do nothing but live my life and try to make my man's last day the best they can be. I did all I could for her, but she got sicker and sicker and I just got desperate. Then I heard about this place that the woman who lives here could help cure anything, but it all coming at cost, and I sure found out that the hard way. All I want to do is get back home to my mum, but I can't. Not without getting her some of that medicine. And we have choices. Okay, so this is in the straight up kinetic. This is, you know, have, yeah, well, I did say in the beginning, didn't I? <laughs> Alright. I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah, me too. I don't know how long my mum has left. I just gotta get out of here. The look in the woman's eyes hurts my heart. I would give up anything to help her get back to her mother and to stop her from making such a sad expression. Whoever. As I locked up in here cannot be any good, and I will never be able to live with myself if I do not want to help her. I really miss her, you know? It's hard being away for so long. I'm worried that something might have happened while I was here. She could have got off wandering in the woods and some wolf could have ate her. The real nasty ones that think the world stares for taking. What noise was that? <laughs> Jeez. I swear that even if I have a hair on the head is here, I'm a... I place my hand over the woman and look in her eyes, trying to feel more confident than I feel. She is fine. Is she anything like you? I'm sure of it. How do you know that? You don't even know my name. That is true. Well, my name is Priya. I hope her first name base is alright with you, but I ain't gonna last. I ain't gonna last once so she's gonna have to do. Amarante. That's a mouthful. Priya laughs and tries to say my name but fails fabulously. I laugh too. Just Ran is fine. Ranch. That ain't no nickname. You should be called cutie or sweetness or something more like you. One more clam shut. How am I meant to respond to someone like that? Mother always said that what I liked was a mistake, a childish confusion, but I am not a child and neither is Priya. So what, what'll it be, sweetness? What can I call you? How about... How about... How about... Uh-oh. 
I'll run up your type. Ooh, I felt the game crash. Kitty. Skies. Skids. Kitty skies. Oh, well, kitty skies. Not what I go for, but hey, why not kitty skies? I was starting to think that it was such a great idea after all. Hearing Priya say it was more embarrassing than I expect. Now that I've covered, let's get working, are you? Just a little bit of feedback, maybe on the other part where I had to top money. It may be kind of like a, a cursor flashing in and out. I'm not sure if that's possible, but that would give me more indication of, to type in. You see that key hanging over yonder? Bring it to me. Priya points to the wall with a large key hanging on the prince just like. Are you sure this is okay? Sure as can be. Why aren't you? Don't you trust me? Open the cell. I do. And we got an achievement to the top right, which you can't uh, see, because I'm only capturing the game. But yeah, we got an achievement, Priya. Priya! I pull the key off to the spike and it's having an expect. And a girl. I'll bring it over here. The lock's a bit stiff on the side. It takes both of us to turn the key, but once it's locked, Priya smashes her solid and stood first and creaked wide over. Goodness, she's a lot stronger. I tried to step back. To my surprise, however, Priya pulls me into a tight hug. I should kiss you for that sort of heroic rescue. He heroic? I only retrieved the key. And boy, did you do well. I mean, I like my freedom, but if I had to look at something for eternity, it backs out. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. Ooh, I to down quite a bit there. I pull away from Priya, but it's very clear from a mischievous smile and she's proud of her uncloth little quip. She not say things like that. It is becoming a lady. Or even a gentleman. No one should speak the way you do. Well, tell me when you get tired of being a lady. And maybe that's another thing. But with my inklings, I'll to go by you or give up that some time ago. What are you implying? Priya looks around as if she's turned for some other soul that has the capacity to make sense of the jests. When none appears, she simply shrugs and carries on. I could explain it, but we ain't here to play house to these guys. We have some exploring to do. I didn't get a good look at anything before I snatched and snapped in that snail, but I could be hard to find where I need. But yeah. That is the wilting amaranth. And uh, yeah, you'll be able to pick her up today on Steam and, you know, for Adam Moore. Quite interested, I like it, I like the kind of unique uniqueness to it. But yeah. Yuri. Yuri Yuri. And of course, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video on the channel. So if you haven't subbed, feel free to sub, because that's something we have to do, apparently. And by that I mean well, even when you do sub, you don't get all the notifications anyway. Whatever. Bye. Anyway, yeah.